Hey, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete, and I wanted to show you guys something in my garden right now. I've got these two raised beds prepped, primed, and ready for spring planting. As you can see, with these two raised beds, I'm not planting from seed, I'm planting from starts. I'm doing some little seedlings that I got from Suzanne Velarde at VillardiGardens.com. She's here in the Phoenix area, and in my opinion, Suzanne grows the best seedlings and plant starts there is. She's at a ton of markets all over town. <clears throat> I'll put her website on the screen right now at VillardiGardens.com. You can go to her site and you can see where she'll be next. So she hooked me up big time. And I wanted to show you guys exactly what I'm planting. It is January 22nd. It's Phoenix. I'm in a t-shirt and shorts because it's gonna be 80 degrees this coming Monday. So it's time to plant out these greens. And uh, I'm gonna plant some things from seed that I have harvested my own seeds in the past, but these plant starts Suzanne had look so good. So let's get to planting. Let me tell you what I'm gonna plant today. We have the kohlrabi, standard kohlrabi, the white kohlrabi. We have the salad bowl red and green lettuce. I already have some char that was already here as a volunteer. This is the red romaine lettuce. We're gonna put some red romaine because my wife Pam likes the greens that are more tender, not necessarily the spicy ones. We've got the purple kohlrabi here. And you can see how these kohlrabis have two plants in one pot. If you guys have some serious gardening skills, you can try to separate those and get two plants for the price of one. Really good thing to do. I got some other chard here that came up volunteer. Some more of the salad bowl red and green lettuce. This is a really cool looking guy. It's called the Ruby Streaks Mizuna. And let me taste a little bit. Really good. <laughs> so it's not bitter. It's kind of more of a neutral. It's not really sweet. It's not really bitter. It's kind of more neutral. And it has kind of a rich taste to it. So I would, I would throw that in a salad. So the Ruby Streaks Mizuna is really good. We got two of those. This one is the, I think it's called the Rattuccino, and it's really spicy. If you guys know the exact name, I think it's Rattuccino, but um, put the name in the comments below for me. This is incredibly spicy, so only doing one of these. And I would like accent a salad with that. And that's it for this bed. Over here, we've got some of the borage, and there's multiple borage plants in there, so we'll be planting that out. We've got these guys, which are flowers, edible flowers and I forget the variety. If you guys recognize what edible flower that is from the greens, let me know in the comments below. We've got this edible flower, which is called a Chinese, uh, which is called a China pink edible flower. So I'm putting the two China pinks on the sides and in the middle, the sweet William Dianthus. So it will give some color. It will be able to attract the healthy pollinators like bees, but repulse the bad bugs like aphids hopefully and it will just add some good antioxidants and color and extra nutrients to my salad we got these guys which are chrysanthemum greens grown more so for the greens and they taste really amazing like uh, you guys have heard of chrysanthemum flower the greens taste really good it tastes really fresh like a dandelion green really fresh tasting so we've got a row of chrysanthemum greens then from Suzanne we've got the Copenhagen market cabbage the early flat uh, Dutch cabbage. And we got these cauliflower plants, snowball cauliflower, snowball cauliflower, and snowball cauliflower. So this will be a bed of more spicy greens and edible flowers, cauliflower, and cabbage. Let me show you how I plant it out. I don't know about you, but I love laying my beds out first. I put another inch of soil on there of good compost and we added some coconut core and azomite rock dust minerals and some worm castings to it. And we, didn't, we did not till the soil. Very important not to till the soil because you don't want to disturb the microbial life that's existing beneath the soil. You've taken a lot of time to put really good stuff into your beds. Why would you disturb it? It's good down there. Just leave it where it is and fill the top layer up with healthy compost, worm castings, azomite rock minerals, and coconut core. Once you got it back up to a level, you can see how it's nice and black now. We're gonna plant these guys out. So I pop them out this way. And 
I'll throw these aside and I dig my little hole. And I plop this guy inside there. Then I'm going to tuck the dirt around the base of the root, but not bury the leaves. Now I'm telling you something. One of the most important things, and actually Suzanne Velarde gave me this tip. Uh, I didn't water these plants today. So they're still in their pots. I didn't water them. She mentioned to me before about two years ago. She said, don't water the plants before you put them in the bed. Water them after you put them in the bed because you want them to absorb all those new nutrients from your good compost. And it will also help to settle all the dirt around the roots and eliminate air pockets. So really good tip. I would not water your plant starts the day you plant them. Instead, plant them and water them once they're in the bed. So I'm gonna get to planting these guys in that method and I will see you guys back here in a few minutes. So right now I'm in between classes. I taught a uh, fitness class this morning and a martial art class this morning and I have to go and do a yoga class in the afternoon, a private lesson with somebody. And I used to, between my classes, come home and just eat and rest and watch some television and catch up on Daily Show, things like that. So now, as I'm getting older, I don't do as much of that anymore. I kind of just come out here and play in the garden. I like using my hands, and I gotta go inside and wash my hands and look all legit and professional for the, for the students and the customers, but they have no idea I was elbow deep in soil in between the classes. So now we have this whole bed planted out. I didn't mention this guy right here in the middle. Uh, this guy is called a uh, mache lamb's lettuce or corn salad. I've never had that green before and it tastes really good. So I recommend the mache lamb's lettuce corn salad. And now we have the bed all done up and nice. So the old Jake Mace from a couple of years ago would have really tried to take every one of these plants that was a double and I would have separated them and tried to get the most out of my plants. But sometimes you risk putting the plant into shock. And I don't have that much time right now my class starts pretty soon. So I figured out that you know sometimes kohlrabis and lettuces, these plants that are not too crazy humongous, um, unlike a tomato plant, but the lettuce and the kohlrabis, they can grow together sometimes. And I've had some really good kohlrabis put off one bulb this way, one bulb that way in the same hole. So you don't always have to separate the plants, especially in the lettuce family. They'll do okay together if your soil is healthy enough. And in this raised bed, for the fall, I had a bed full of tomatoes. So now, there's no more tomatoes. We're rotating the crops, we're doing lettuce. So tomatoes in the fall, lettuce in the spring, and I'll change it up and do something else this coming fall. That way there are nutrients in the soil is always replenishing itself because the same plant every season will eat the same nutrients and will deplete the soil. So it's good to rotate. I'm gonna get to doing this bed. I'll meet you guys back here in a few minutes. Now, the borage, I'm gonna separate and show you guys how I do it. So I can see one, two, three different plants here. And what I'm gonna try to determine is which plants are farthest apart. So this was in a big one gallon pot, so it's gonna be easy to separate. So I'm gonna separate this one right here on the right from these two on the left. I'm gonna plant the right one in this hole and the left one in the hole over there. So here's what I do. I kind of just pinch it a little bit, kind of massage the roots a little bit. And you're gonna hear some tearing and whatnot, but as long as you plant it right away and try to keep as much soil on the plant as possible and then water it right after you plant it, you're gonna be okay. So check it out. I'm kind of just gently taking my time and tearing it in half and then it kind of will fall away and check that out. Oh yes, my son, my child. <laughs> so we have one plant over here. I'll lay here for a second. And this guy, all by himself, see I kept most of the roots in the soil. So now when I plant this guy in his hole, all, those, all that new soil will just kind of settle around his root system. I'll water him and he will hopefully not go into shock and not really even know the difference. So we'll tuck him in all nice. I don't compact the soil too much, it's a little bit of a light fluff. And that, is a healthy borage. Now I'll take this one and bring it over here. 
put it in this way. We'll tuck the soil around this way. So now, from one, there are now many. And hopefully they'll both make it and I'll have a couple healthy borage plants. Right there, perfect. Now here's one thing I also look out for. This is one of the cabbage plants. And you see how there's two in there. And when I looked at it in the pot, they were so close together, their main stems were touching. I'm afraid they're a little bit too far along. And I could separate the roots out, but maybe the plant goes in the shock. So I'm gonna have more cabbage, so I'm gonna cut one off. This is one of the most hard things to do because you don't wanna kill your babies, but we're gonna give strength to the other one. So which one looks the best to you? Does this one look the best? Or does this one look the best? What do you guys think? I think this one right here looks the best. The leaves look nice and mature. I can see a lot of new growth in the center. So we're gonna <laughs> pretend like we're the Spartans and choose the strongest child <laughs> and discard the other one. Clip it right there at the stem. The reason why I clip it because then all the roots from this plant will now biodegrade and give strength to the other plant. So, and then I'm gonna take this guy and kind of just straighten him up a little bit settle him and make him look fantastic and now he'll become a strong incredible looking cabbage plant so we have this six foot by three foot bed all planted this six foot by three foot bed all planted and looks so beautiful i love when the beds are newly planted it looks so nice and i always kind of wash the dirt that's on the edge of the planter back in and then once all the dirt is washed in there i just give a little soft little water to each plant and I always do overhead watering when I first plant new plants because I really want to flush those roots and create a good moisture zone around the root system and once I do that initial hand watering you can go back to your drip system if you have a drip system set up and what I'm trying to visualize while I'm watering these plants is I'm trying to visualize what the water is doing under the soil and I want to water the plant until the water has seeped down about six to eight inches under the soil. So what I do is I go through one time, hit him once, about this much, then I'll go through a second time and hit him again. And once we have these all watered, it's uh, time to watch them grow, have fun, eat the leaves as they come off, let the plants make you the healthiest you you've been in ever, especially since it's the new year right now. And if you guys are from a uh, climate not like the Sonoran Desert, I'm so sorry, you probably still have snow on the ground. Oh, so brutal. I hope that you'll take some of these plants and plant them in your garden. And again, I'm just a gardener from the School of Hard Knocks. I don't know pretty much what I'm doing, but I'm willing to learn and every month I get better and better. I'll see you guys next time.